Good morning. Good morning. And praise the Lord to each and every one of you. We welcome you to the Promised Church of God. We welcome you to the homegoing service of our mother, our sister, our friend, our wife, husband. I'm going to need your help today, teacher, a lady that wear many hats. And to many of us, sees so much more than words can describe. And today, we're here to say, see you soon. And for us to encourage each other and to comfort each other in love, understanding that these are the things that she would want. So before we go any further, we're going to go into a segment of praise and worship. So I'm going to call the praise and worship team to come and feel free to join in as we sing and as we worship together. Because one thing we know that our dearly beloved minister Jared was a worshiper. So we ask that you join us in worship as we give praise unto our God. Praise the Lord. We're going to invite you to stand. It's a celebration of life for dear Minister Jared. Feel free to put your hands together, and we're just going to celebrate this morning. Amen. Amen. Your hands together. Pressing on. Oh, yes, I'm pressing on. Pressing on. Oh, yes, I'm pressing on. Press along, saints, press along in God's own way. Oh, press, press along, saints, press along in God's own way. Persecution we must bear, trials and crosses in our way. For oh, the battle, the battle, the sweet of the victory. Press along, press along, saints, press along in God's, in God's own way. Oh, press, press along, saints, press along in God's, in own, God's way. own way. Persecution, Persecution we must bear. Trials and crosses in our way. Oh, the battle, the battle, the sweet turn of victory.
prepare. Jesus, Jesus gone to prepare. A mansion for me. are coming by and by when we reach the city in the sky in the sky oh sorrow will be over joy will come at last as the days are coming by and by the days are coming This morning, hallelujah.
When we are, we have a hope this morning. We will see Minister Jared again one day. We will sing and shout the victory. Put your hands together and give him a praise. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, put your hands together. And bless the Lord this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We give him praise and we give him honor. We bless his name today. For the Lord is good and his mercies endure forever. And truly we are thankful this morning. Hallelujah that he has kept us. Hallelujah in spite of your circumstances and your situation today. He has kept you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We give God praise and we give him honor today. Hallelujah. Praise God at this time we'll have the reading of today's scripture by Minister. To Lorraine Men's. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Our first scripture is taken from the Old Testament, Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 to 10. And it reads thus To everything, there's a season, a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate a time of war and a time of peace. What profit hath he that worshipeth in that wherein he laboreth? Verse 10, I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. Our second lesson is taken from the New Testament. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50. To 58. 
Know this, I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit in corruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall, shall have put on immortality, they shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? And O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And we say amen. 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 amen to God's word. Amen. Praise the Lord. At this time, we'll have, we'll ask um, Reverend Dawkins to come and pray God's blessing. Amen on the family and for the rest of today. And after which, we'll have a solo by Sister Mighty. Sister Winifred Lavoy, sorry. I bring you greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus. Greetings. And please allow me on the behalf of my wife, Pastor Deanne Dawkins, and the Greater Love family to express our sincere condolences to the family at this time of loss. I, it is my hope that no one in here is rejoicing for some sinister motive. The story went as someone rejoiced at the passing of a loved one, and they were, the people were puzzled as to why this person was rejoicing so much. And the person said, the reason I'm rejoicing is because she left me most of her belongings. Psalm 116. It says, I'll pay my vows unto thee, O Lord, in the presence of your people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of the saints. Let us pray. Father, God of mercies and love, whose ways are past finding out, We submit ourselves to you today. Amidst the many questions of which the most prominent may be right now, the question why, for which we don't have a specific answer, but we trust your Lordship. And so we come today praying for the family. Even though we may not understand how the passing of our loved ones could be precious to you. We may not understand the scriptures when it says that to die is gain. Because when our, our loved ones have passed, it causes great pain and sorrow and grief. Yet in the midst of the loss, we can say, Whatsoever you do, you do all things well. And we can trust you. And so this moment, though we may not be able to explain, though the Jared's family may not be able to explain 
the whys and how. And I pray, God, that you will cause your comfort to resonate deep in the corridors of their souls. Cause them to be mindful that our Lord and Savior who walked on earth, he expressed grief at the loss of loved ones too. So it's okay to be grieving. But I pray that the strength of God will sustain the family today. I pray, God, that you will draw them closer to you. Enable them, Lord, to reflect on the virtues that you have deposited in the life of our beloved Dr. Jarrett. And may they reflect on the many moments of encouragement, words of wisdom that she expressed, and may they reflect on it. I pray in the name of Jesus that they will be drawn closer to one another, but above all, that they will be drawn closer to you. We pray today for strength again. We pray today that they will be able to live out these virtues. May, may they cause her life to be a memorial by living it out. That you may be honored and be glorified. And when they are in their lonely moments, will you please come alongside them and whisper words of comfort. When they feel weak and can't go on. I pray you'll come alongside and deposit that invisible strength that only comes from you. In the name of Jesus, I pray also that they will rejoice at the fact that she shall rise again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that we will be caught up to meet her. And I pray that everyone today will make this vow that as a demonstration of love towards her, that they will serve her, God. I pray you'll strengthen them to do so, cause them to do so. Father, we thank you. Thank you so much for how much her life has touched their lives. And I thank you that the world will be better because of what they will do. We ask these mercies in the name of Jesus that no weapon formed against this family will prosper. In the name of Jesus, I pray God that they will succeed, that they will triumph and overcome all obstacles and glorify you and that they will all meet their beloved mother, sister, aunt, Grandmother, wife, friend, mentor. I pray that not one, one family member will be lost. They'll come to know you as Lord and Savior. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. To the family of the bereaved, Bishop Dobbin, First Lady Dobbin, I bring you greetings in the wonderful and matchless name of Jesus Christ. To all in the household of faith, we're here to lift up the mighty name of Jesus today. Amen. And we are here to raise our voices in unison as we bid farewell to our dear Dr. Norma Jarrett. I'm here to just render two verses of this well-known hymn, Beulah Land. And we are going to sing, if you know the words, amen? Amen. 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 I'm kind of homesick for a country To which I've never been before. No sad goodbyes will 
the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Sister LaBoy. Amen. Praise the Lord. Once again, I just want to say welcome to each and every one of you. Those that are joining us online, we want to welcome you. I know if you could be here, you would have been here um, to show your respect. So we want to thank you for joining us. And for we that are, that are here in the sanctuary, I just want to express greetings and thanks uh, for your support today. Amen. It means so much to each and every one of the family members. Amen. So thank you for being here with us. Time will not allow us to 
do everything that we'd like to do. So when time is slipping away from us, so we're going to go into some tributes. Amen. I hope that uh, those are ready. I'm not sure what order um, those were asked to uh, give tributes or come in. Um, but I'll ask uh, the first name that I see on the list is uh, Dwayne Jarrett. I'm going to ask him to get himself ready. But I just want to say uh, I could not leave this podium without saying how much uh, Minister Jared has impacted my life and truly I'm grateful to know her and she is one of my biggest supporters when it comes to the ministry and every time that I would speak or preach or do anything she would make sure if it's not the same day it's the following day she would shoot me a text message or she'll give me a phone call and if it's something that need correcting she'll correct it and if it's something that she want to highlight and sometimes she'll say have you ever thought about this verse that you could have used and she just coach and she mentors me and the last thing that we had back and forth as far as the ministry go was in a text message after I preached on May 2nd. And she responded at 126, she says, after I was done preaching. She responded, hey, my son, well done. Yes, the evidence there weighs, and the evidence and pass the verdict. You may not understand, but we'll, we'll get there. We certainly don't need no corrective lens to see the facts well said. God bless you, love always. And I responded, thank you. I will always be indebted to you for pouring into me. And she responded, to God be the glory, my dear. She's always encouraging me. She's always been a source of encouragement to each and every one of us. And I want to thank her. I'm tasked with this task to moderate the service. And I'm thinking what to say. Can't come up with nothing, so I said, let's just do it. But one thing I remembered the first time when I was, I was supposed to moderate a a funeral service, which was Mother Wait. I went, I saw her, and I says, I've never done this before. What should I do? And she says, one thing you should always do, make it about the family. Don't dwell too much on the person that is laying in front of you. They have lived their life, and now is the family's time to run with it. So I want to encourage each and every one of you to continue. One of her priors is that you all will serve the Lord. And if you want to give her a gift, allow the Spirit of God to convict your heart and lead you into that path. So with that funeral, Mother Wait, she says, but you have a problem. Your family too. So how are you going to do it? And I have a problem today because I consider myself as a family also. So I've made a commitment that I'm going to run this race. Made a commitment that I'm a, not because I see the people here today and I would wish that the people would be at my funeral. Not, not, not because of that, because I know the promise that she's now receiving. The promise of God has come full circle in her life. And that is my desire. That the promise of God will be also granted unto me if I just hold on. So thank you for coming. And as I'll call now uh, Dwayne Jarrett to come to bring a tribute.
Good morning. Good morning. Um, first, I would like to give thanks to the Most High. All be the glory. Um, I'd like to thank um, Pastor Dobbin for... And Sister Dobbin. So, uh, um, my grandma always gave me this um, since, you know, this is our little secret. Um, and it goes a little something like this. It says, he that loveth his son causes him often to feel the rod, that he may have joy of him in the end. He that chastens his son shall have joy in him. And and shall rejoice of him among his acquaintance. He that teaches his son grieveth the enemy. And before his friends, he shall rejoice of him. Though his father, though my grandma die, yet he is as though he were not dead. <laughs> For he hath left one behind him that is like himself. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, while he lived, he saw and rejoiced in him. And when he died, he was not sorrowful. A good name is better than a precious ointment, and a day of death than the day of one's birth. It is better to go in the house of mourning than to go in the house of feasting. For, for that is the end of all men, and the living will lay it to heart. Sorrow is better than laughter. I'm all right. Let me go. For by the sadness of the countenance of the heart is made better. Amen. 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 Just so we expedite, we ask the next person to come. Just two. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm up here to represent um, my brother, Ishmael Menz, my cousin, Anisha Jarrett, my other cousin, Tiana. I'm here to represent Dwayne. And I'm here to represent Isaiah. Psalm 46, verse 10 reads, he says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. My grandmother was my introduction into faith. What it is, how to live it, and how to share it with others. She was a person who knew how to enjoy stillness while be while still being faithful. Please note that the scripture does not say, be at peace and know that I am God. It says, be still. This is a lesson that my grandmother mastered in the midst of chaos, heartbreak, disappointment, 
Grandma was still. She had an unwavering belief that no matter the circumstance, she knew that God was God. Because she knew God for herself, she basked in the stillness. She relished in not knowing. She enjoyed not being in control. And she fought hard because she knew God would grant her the victory. In a world where all of us are rushing for immediate gratification and ready-made blessings from God, I invite you all to learn from my grandmother and be still and know that God is God. Praise the Lord. Praise God. I believe now we'll have a tribute from the ministers of the Promised Church of God, after which we have Lifeline, okay, Lifeline Prayer Ministries, after the ministers of the Promised Church of God. Praise the Lord again. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are here to worship and to remember the life of Dr. Reverend Norma Jarrett and to encourage the family. And we also want to thank them for sharing her with us over all the years. Amen. I stand to represent the ministers of this great ministry of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Promised Church of God International. We want to express our deepest sadness, but great joy at the heavenly transition of our mother, sister, colleague, mentor, and friend, Reverend Dr. Norma Jarrett, we are here to celebrate her life and legacy. Started from, an early, started from her early days as a new believer and founding member of Brunswick Church of God, now the Promised Church of God, her passion for learning and teaching led her to grow over leaps and bounds. And to date, she has come she has become one of the most effective and knowledgeable ministers at the Promised Church of God International. She eagerly made herself available in any and every area of ministry possible. She was our first Sunday school superintendent. She served as evangelism director, chairperson of our planning committee, co-teacher in Bible studies, a Sunday school teacher, coordinator of VBS, and an active member of the ladies' ministry department. And, all, and well known as the Dean of the Promised Church of God School of Ministry. She was responsible for preparing curriculum for different categories of study for the training of our leadership team. In this capacity, she was able to do what she loved. She was able to do what she loved, which was teaching, training, encouraging, and equipping believers in the word of God. All of our current pastors of our sister churches receive their license as ministers under the training of Minister Jarrett and our Bishop, Pastor Dobbin, in the School of Ministry. Others who also trained in the School of Ministry 
are our lay ministers, department leaders, officers and teachers, ushers and armor bearer. All, all, all benefited from her in the depth training. She meant so much and impacted us in so many different ways. She wore many hats and was willing and available to impact her world for Christ. She will be dearly missed. To her family, we thank you for sharing her with us all these years. Her sacrifice has changed the lives of many who have come to know Christ through her tireless efforts. It is our prayer that you will also follow in her legacy and serve God until the end. She has accomplished what God placed her on this earth to do, and now she can say as Paul in 2 Timothy 4, verse 7 to 8, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness. And we know that she is resting peacefully. Praise God. Praise God. To me, I'm her adopted daughter. And we had many, many, many conversations. But her nickname, Blossom, came up. I don't remember who gave her that nickname or how it came about. But as I was thinking about it, blossoms have seeds and they make more flowers. And wherever they are planted, they make a difference. And Minister Jarrett definitely have made a difference in all of our lives. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon one singing I love you Lord singing I love you Lord Oh, 
praise the Lord. I know she's singing that. That's one of her favorite. Praise the Lord. Amen. Lifeline Ministries, prior ministry. and good day to everyone here today, to all the pastors, members of the congregation, the Reeve family, and on behalf of the Lifeline, pa Lifeline Prayer Ministry, I just want to express our condolence to the Reeve family, also to the Promised Church of God family and all the friends that are acquainted with Dr. Norma Jarrett. It is one of these sad occasions that take me to the promised church of God, not one of those happy occasions. Well, I've been here on many happy occasions, but this is one of the sad occasions. And we are not sad, but because we are human, we are sad, but we are happy to know that we know this wonderful woman of God. And without a shadow of a doubt, we know where she is. Because she tells us before she leaves there that she knows where she's bound. And this, this morning, I am happy to have known her. And I stand here today on behalf of the Lifeline Ministry to give a tribute on their behalf. In the late 1980s, Dr. Norma Jarrett fell in love and with Ilda Archer, president of the Lifeline Ministry. Their friendship developed and they grow in Christ and develop a ministry called the Lifeline Prior Ministry. Dr. George was instrumental in this ministry. She kept the ministry together. She kept the, con the group of people praying together, and she was a great encourager. There are many wonderful things that can be said about Minister Jarrett, as she's affectionately called Minister Jarrett, Sister Jarrett, Norma. When I call the phone and she doesn't pick up, you hear, Norma. I, I say, wow, that's amazing. But her love for Christ and humanity and soul saving has led her to be a very challenging person. And when I say challenging, you could not say something to her that she does a question and asks you, say that again, Tell me, explain more, say something else. And that's how she reacts with me. And I always go a little deeper. And as I go deeper, I can hear the power of God coming out as she explains and give me more understanding of what she wants to say. So her love for God has given the opportunity to spread the word of God, which she does without question. She's always willing to teach the word of God and to preach the word of God. Dr. Jarrett was no ordinary teacher. She was a true teacher. On Saturday mornings, was our favorite moment with her. We would patiently and anxiously wait for the time to be handed over to her so she can start teaching on the book of Revelation. It was like a couple weeks before she went really ill. 
I hand it over to her. And when I hand it over, she said, Evangelist Kenton, I am not feeling well. And we troubled heaven on her behalf. We prayed. And I want to say today to the family, if prayer was to keep her here, Minister Jarrett would be here because she was a prayer warrior in her own rights. <laughs> Nothing would have taken her. It's God's will. And that's how she ministers. It is in God's will. And because it is God's will, I encourage you today, do not mourn as one that have no hope, knowing that she's resting sweetly in the arms of a blessed Lord. Amen. Dr. Jarrett was instrumental in organizing the yearly prior conference. She comes up with a theme, she moderates, she speaks sometimes. She always throw it back at me, Evangelist Kenton, I'll get you. She really does. <laughs> She really does. And today, whatever her role was, she did it with zeal and fervor. And as John W. Vaughan quotes, a useless life is an early death. For Dr. Norma Jarrett, this never applies to her extraordinary existence. Dr. Norma Jarrett, child of God, lover of humanity, she is missed by the entire Lifeline prior ministry. And I know many more will say she surely miss. Her life has impacted the ministry tremendously, and we will never forget her labor of love. God bless you, family. God keep you as you rest assured that she's resting sweetly in the arms of a blessed Lord. May her soul rest in peace and light perpetual shine upon her. Amen. At this time we'll call what we know as her favorite. Gotta say it because I'm jealous her favorite minister Fiona Dover. Praise God. Good morning, everyone. I'm here to do the acknowledgments. I just want to say to the family sincere condolences, especially from my parents, Bishop Arthur and Pastor Beverly Brown, my siblings, Sid and Jason, who are all watching via live stream. They just want to let you know that they're praying for you. My dad refers to her as a champion in the ministry. I'm thinking of you and your family at this sad time. When something like this happens, no words are big enough to share the sympathy we feel. I just want to know that you're loved and cared about and that my heart is with you in your loss. To Darius Minister Nicole and family from Pastor Sister Dobbin and the church family with prayers and lots of loving. Our prayers go out to you. It's difficult at such a time to know what words to say, but understanding thoughts and prayers are there with you today. Dear, dear Sister Nicole and family from Sister Lee, praying for you in the loss of your mom. There will be things that trigger tears and things that bring laughter things that you never expected, but they'll gently remind you of all the wonderful details that made life with your mom so precious. May God hold you close to his heart where he can feel your deepest loss and fill you with his deepest love. Our thoughts are with your family now. As you share your stories and memories, Hope you find comfort in the familiar embrace of family, strength in the caring hearts of friends, and peace in the healing power of time. To Minister Nicole and family, we will keep you in our prayers, and this is from the CHU family. 
a journey remembered. As some people journey through life, they leave footprints wherever they go. Footprints of kindness and love, courage and compassion, humor and inspiration, joy and faith. Even when they are gone, we can still look back and clearly see the trail they left behind. A trail bright with hope that invites us to follow. Praying you'll be comforted with precious memories and God's presence to care for you in your loss. With sympathy, blessed are those who walk in the light of your presence. And this is from the Lifeline Prayer Ministry. The family of Reverend Dr. Norma Joyce Jarrett wishes to express our sincere thanks for the flowers and other expressions of love during our time of bereavement. Special thanks to Executive Director of Plinton Curry Funeral Homes and Mr. James Ronald Curry for your time and empathic care in assisting us with this process. Auntie Pansy Jarrett, for loving us the way you do and being there when mommy was sick in the hospital, the number of nights you were there and even after she came home. Cousin Annette and Alan Robins Robinson, for your support, especially cooking for us in our time of grief. That fish was amazing, just saying. Even though you were feeling it too. Special thanks also to Mercy Dickerson, Dennis and Terrell Musier for your love and support. God bless you. Amen. At this time, we'll have the obituary um, being read by Annette Robinson. And after which, the next voice you'll hear is our pastor and bishop, Bishop Quiglin Dobbin. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being with us today to celebrate the life of a remarkable woman, my aunt, Minister Jarrett. There are no lessons about the art of mothering. We can only do our best and hope that we do it well. My aunt, our mother, certainly got an A plus in this. We rarely express our gratitude for someone. My aunt made sure I always knew how much she cared. I knew she loved me because she took the time to tell me that. My aunt was an incredible woman. I feel incredibly lucky to have been her niece. And I want to express my gratitude to her for everything she did for me. Minister Dr. Norma Joyce Jarrett, Nee Thomas, also affectionately known as Blossom to Many, daughter of Charles and Ambrosine Thomas, was called home to be with her Lord and Savior on September 26, 2021. She was the wife of George E. Jarrett for 52 years, the mother of five children, grandmother of many, one great-grandchild, and was, she was matriarch of the family. Minister Jarrett was born in Jamaica where she spent her early years. She was formally educated in Jamaica, <coughs> excuse me, and worked for a number of years at the Postmaster General of Jamaica before migrating to the US. After migrating to the USA, she started her career in the healthcare field and remained in it until her retirement. As my aunt would say, I was caught in the net of Christ, gave her life to Christ, and started her spiritual journey at the New Brunswick Church of God, now known as the Promised Church of God. She became one of the founding members of the New Brunswick Church of God. It was here that Minister Jarrett ministered and influenced many lives. As a member of the church, she worked diligently in various ministries and positions. As a humble servant of the Lord, she served as dean of the Promised Church of God School of Ministry in later years, then received her doctorate in divinity degree from Grace Hill Bible University and served as a professor in the university. 
over the last few years, we all saw, we all saw how her health declined. Her spirit of fun and zest for life was always present. She insisted on being present at all family functions, whether it was a graduation ceremony, a friend's wedding, Thanksgiving dinner, Christmas, funeral, or just a regular Saturday family gathering. My aunt was loved by many, so many. She always knew how to brighten someone's day and make them feel loved. She treated everyone with kindness and respect. She rarely got mad, and when she did, you knew she had a darn good reason. Her outlook on life was inspiring. If you were lucky to spend more than five minutes in her presence, you were forever changed. I am so grateful to have had an aunt who embraced every day with optimism. Minister Jarrett taught, mentored, and ministered to everyone she encountered. Her smile and her willingness to help others personally, physically, and spiritually will always be remembered and cherished by all. She never expected earthly praise because she knew her crown was waiting for her in heaven. But she expected that when she received help, excuse me, that when she received help, you should do better for yourself and especially others. We have lost a wonderful mother, a wife, a companion, a grandmother, a great grandmother, a sister, an aunt, an advisor, a friend, and a mentor. I am so honored to have been her niece. I am grieving for the amazing relationship I had with her. I am grieving for Uncle Jarrett, who has lost the best wife it is possible to have had. For our relatives who have only known this wonderful lady for such a brief time in their lives, for the family who have lost the matriarch, we have all suffered a huge loss. Her hobbies were crocheting, crossword puzzles, reading, especially the word of God, cooking, spending time with her family, and helping others. Auntie was an avid Yankee fan, and she loved watching her grandson, Dwayne Jarrett, former NFL player, play football. She was preceded in death by her parents and several siblings. She leaves behind her devoted and loving husband, George E. Jarrett, children Michelle, Nicole, Camille, Athelstan, AKA Dave, and Tansy Jarrett, grandchildren, Duane and Anisha Jarrett, Isaiah Ruffin, Camille and Ishmael Menz, great-grandchild Nyla Henry, siblings, Jeremiah Knight, Herman Jones, Kathleen McCullough, Ethno and Amos Thomas, and a host of other relatives and friends. As 2 Timothy 4 verses 7 and 8 says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to only me, but unto all of them also that love is appearing. She has received a righteous crown and is waiting for us to come. Minister Dr. Norma Joyce Jarrett Blossom taught us all what is important in life, to love, to support, and care for friends and family in our lives. We are all better off for knowing her. It was a great privilege to be a part of her family. I can understand why this church is so full today. Thank you all once again for supporting our family today. There is a poem I would like to leave with our family, and this poem was written by <laughs> Ron Tranmer, The Broken Chain. <laughs> we little knew that day God was going to call your name. In life, we loved you dearly. In death, we do the same. It broke our hearts to lose you. You did not go alone. For part of us went with you the day God called you home. 
You left us beautiful memories. Your love is still our guide. And although we cannot see you, you're always at our side. Our family chain is broken, Auntie, and nothing seems the same. But as God calls us one by one, the chain will link again. We love you, Auntie, and please sleep in eternal peace. Thank you. Good evening or good afternoon. Is it? Oh, it's still morning. <laughs> I want to extend special greeting at this time to all. I want to extend special greeting this morning, first of all, to the families, Minister Jarrett and family, the Jarrett's family and all the attached family members that I don't really know all, but I can assure you that Minister Jarrett will live on in our hearts. Further, I want to extend greeting to members of the clergy, Bishop Dr. Lang, Minister Bishop Dawkins. I wish we had time to give them a chance to say something. But as you know, time is against us, and I want to follow um, as quickly as possible. So bear with us. We love you. And I can surely say this day that Minister Jarrett has come a long way. We started back in 1980. I was privileged to baptize her, privileged to license her, work with her, mentor her, and she becomes one of my champions. Not able to go into details, but everyone here at Promise has a high value on Minister Jarrett. She has done well. We cannot put a price tag on what she's meant to this ministry, never mind the family. But today I want to share briefly with you something on the topic, the sudden coming of the Lord. Paul wrote in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 17. He quotes, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so then also, which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, the dead and with the chump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. We then that are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to be with the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. As the dead in Christ are raised, Living believers will be transfigured. Their bodies will be immortal, will put on immortality. Their transformation 
will happen in a very short time in the twinkling of an eye. But the resurrected believers and the transfigured believers will be caught up together to meet Christ in the air. That is in the atmosphere between earth and heaven. They will be visible united with Christ and taken to the Father's house in heaven and be united with loved ones who have died, according to Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. Praise the Lord. They will be removed from the distress and all persecution, opp um, oppression, from the entire sphere of sin and from debt, the rupture delivers them from the rot to come. This is from the great tribulation. I want you to understand, church, the hope that our Savior will soon return to take us out of this world to ever be with the Lord. The blessed hope of all redeemed. It is a major source of comfort for suffering believers. I tell you there is going to be a reunion. There, hallelujah, there is going to be shouting on the hills of glory. Minister Jarrett has joined that rank. And I believe she is waiting just to hear, let's go. Because it is an appointed time. And all those who have come to know Christ have run their race. I have no confidence. Sorry. I have confident that Satan cannot be a hindrance or an obstacle any further. He has been subdued. Praise the Lord. Minister Jarrett has triumphed over all the testings, over all the heartaches and the pain. She has come through as a champion. Her testimony is here to uh, guide us. That she has fought a good fight. She has kept the faith. Hallelujah. And there is now laid up for her a crown in glory. For us that are still here. May I assure you. That there is going to be a meeting place. May I assure you. That the only way we could join her again. Is if we now. Settled our account with God. There are many of us wish and uh, are hoping and planning or thinking that we would be with her. I will see her again. But there is a path that we must walk. And that path is the, is the part of righteousness. We must lay aside the sin and the weight that easily beset us. And we must run this race with patience. Minister Jarrett had run her race. And today I believe she's shouting around the throne of glory. I believe the angel in heaven is now rejoicing I believe everyone in this house can sweetly say uh, I'm privileged to have walked with her I'm privileged to have listened to her sit under her tutoring and today I have hope I said I have hope that we will meet again I have hope that there is going to be a reunion I have hope that soon and very soon when the king of glory, hallelujah, shall shout, amen, uh, approach this hemisphere, amen, and the chump shall sound. He said the dead in Christ will rise and I'm looking for the time when we will hear come on home. Uh, many of us had have troubles and heartaches and uh, even sometimes paying our bills and taking care of the things uh, that we must do on this side. But there won't be any more tears. 
There won't be any more dying. There won't be any more doctor's bill. There won't be any more going to the hospital. There won't be any more worrying or struggling. She has laid down, amen, all the struggles and all the sorrows and all the heartaches. She has laid to rest all responsibility. She has laid to rest or give it up. No more worrying. And I believe she, if, if I could just think the way I believe she would be thinking. She'd be saying to the family, I'm going on before you. But I'm looking to see you. My eyes are on you. I want to see you that day. I believe she'd be saying, I don't want to be searching heaven for any of you. I have prayed for you. I have witnessed to you. I have uh, uh, many uh, sessions of prayer and discussion. But now you must put it into practice. Amen. She's not going to give you any more pep talk. She's not going to call you in the room aside by yourself as not to embarrass you. She has done her part. Now you must pick up the mantle or the baton and begin to run your race if you have not yet started. It is time to face reality. All the flowers and all the nice things that has been said here today. She didn't hear one word of what you said. She didn't see any of the poems or any of the nice words that you said. She didn't pay no attention to it. When she bowed her heads the other day and closed her eyes, she shut down all communication between family and friends. Hallelujah. And she said, Lord, into your hands, hallelujah, into your hands, I commit my spirit. Into your hands, I deliver this frail body. And now, I want to be at peace with you. Families, friends, we love you dear, but Jesus loves you more. We want to do everything that we can for you. But there are some things you must do for yourself. Unless you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. Unless you take up the baton. And follow after mom. Whether it be husband. Son, daughters, nephews, niece. She cannot give you another word. She will not be privileged like Lazarus and Dives. Dives was able to look across into Abraham's bosom and saw Lazarus and request that Lazarus would come and quench his thirst with just a tip of water. But the thing that, re the answer that he received we can't come to you, and you can't come to us because there is a gulf. But right now, you can create that bridge. As one writer said, I see a bridge, a way to cross over all troubles and strives. You can cross over now while you yet live, while you have time. Amen. At this, I want to say that I'm going to close off here. But um, there's so much more I could and I would love to say. But, you know, there's a saying, wisdom is a principal thing. And I want to thank all of you that are here today to pay your last respect. All ministers and colleagues, it is such an honor and a privilege to have you here supporting us as we grieve over our beloved. But I want to give an opportunity, I'll be closing next two minutes. 
is there a family member or friend that is not saved? You have ideas or thought that you want to see grandma again or mom. There's only one way to do it. And that is to accept Christ as your personal savior. We can start by simple. Ask the Lord to come into your heart. I would love to pray with you. If you would do so, just slip your hand up. We'll pray with you and we'll try to follow up. Because it is not God's will that any of you should be lost. Amen. I am proud to stand here on this occasion in the sense that I have watched her grow. Amen. She has, always, she has not always been the champion and the prophecy that you see today. There was the days of growing pain. Amen. Where we struggled. But she has blossomed and taken her full name. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Would you stand with me please if you are able to? And if the one who would like to be prayed for, could you slip your hand up, please? Father, I am humbled to stand before you today. Among all these men and women that know you as Lord and Savior, Yet there are those that don't know you. That don't have a relationship with you. I pray today, Lord, that there would be a spirit of conviction. I pray that today, after leaving this service, they will fathom or contemplate what must I do to be saved. Because God, we know for sure you are coming soon. We know for sure, God, that the enemy want to destroy them. He has made it clear. His uh, job is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But you are come that will have life and have it abundantly. So I pray for life. I pray for strength. I pray for the courage of every family member and friend that are in this house. I pray, God, that they will accept you as Lord and Savior. I pray they'll turn over their lives to you. And God, they too will be around the throne. Hallelujah. When the roll is called up yonder, they too will be there. As I now commit this service into your hands. In Jesus' name, I now turn over to the mortician. We're going to be processing to the Enwood Cemetery in North Brunswick on George's Road. Did you hear that? It's the Elmwood. Yes. Elmwood Cemetery, St. George's Road, just about six or seven minutes up the road. 
it's, it's from here you go out to um, Commercial Avenue, which is now um, Paul Robinson. And you continue through the light, our beer left at the light, and it's about five minutes up the road. continue to celebrate as we exit. If you know the words, please sing along with us. There's a car here, U31MZW. Is this your car? Okay, well, the hearse gotta move and then it can come out. It'll soon be done. When troubles and trials, when I get home. I'm gonna shave my hands with the elders. I'm gonna tell all the people good morning. I'm gonna sit down beside my Jesus. I'm gonna sit down and rest a little while. It's only done. 
troubles and trials when I get home on the other side I'm gonna shake my hands with the elders I'm gonna tell all the people good morning I'm gonna sit down beside my Jesus Gonna sit down and rest a little while Outside to just go ahead and get in your vehicles and move out to the cemetery. Please. 